All right, before we get too far with navigation, what I'm gonna do is go in here to preferences, click initialize ZBrush here, hit yes, and that'll just clear my ZBrush out. And because I don't like to capture gradients, again, we're gonna go over here to document, take our range, turn that down to zero, and we'll start out here. So we've learned the interface, we know what a document is now, we know how to grab tools out of here, and at least primitives is what we know how to grab. So we're gonna open up, you see we have the simple brush selected. If we click on that, that's gonna open up our tool palette window here. And again, we're gonna go here to the 3D meshes, we'll grab a cube 3D, drag it down on our canvas, and because we wanna start navigating around this object, we're gonna go into edit mode. Now, when you go and you click in your gray area around your object, you know you're gonna be able to rotate on your object. Now, the reason I'm saying click around the object is if you actually want to click on the object, it's gonna yell at you because this is a primitive object. We're not gonna get there just yet. We're just talking about navigation. It's gonna tell you if you want to sculpt or make changes to this object, you need to convert it to another type of object. But for now, we're gonna ignore that. So just click anywhere in this gray area here with your left mouse, or if you're using a tablet, just press down in the gray area here and you'll be able to rotate. We're gonna talk about two different styles of navigation. And speaking of, I'm gonna close this menu here so I can put a little bit of information here for you. So classic ZBrush navigation, left click in any area around your object and you'll be able to rotate around your object. Now left clicking on your object is gonna to wanna to manipulate it. And just to see this a little bit better, what I'm gonna do is go over here to where I see, you see polyframe and you can do shift F and that'll turn on your polyframe here so you can see the wireframe of the object. So as we're rotating, you're able to see that a little bit clearer. Now, as we're rotating, if you hold down shift, it's gonna snap it to like a side view, and then you can start rotating this way and shift and snap it here. You can hold down shift and snap it to a top view here. So you can use shift to constrain it to different or orthographic views. So if you're from another 3D program and you're used to like working in a perspective view here and then having, or maybe up here, and then having your side, top, front, and side views, while you're working in your perspective view. ZBrush kind of has that built in. If you wanna work on the front view, just hold down shift and it'll snap to the front. You can shift snap the side, you can shift snap to the top, and then you can continue working in perspective mode just like this. If you wanna move or pan your object, you can hold down, you can click in here, and then if you hold down alt and then click in here, it's going to move your object around like this. If you wanna scale, you're gonna hold down alt, you're gonna to click to move the object around, you're gonna let go of alt, and then when you drag, it's gonna make it bigger and smaller. So again, Alt, start moving it, and you can see you're panning, and then if you let go of Alt while you're panning, it'll go into scale. Now, of course, you don't have to pan a little bit and then move this in. Uh, what I essentially do if I wanna move around is I'm just tapping Alt and then just kind of zooming in and out. So this is classic ZBrush navigation, and the reason it's classic is because it's easy to use with a tablet. So this is classic ZBrush navigation to use with a tablet. So if you're used to using a tablet, this is pretty easy. If you're used to using a mouse, there's a an option called right-click navigation. If you go up here to preferences and go back into the interface area that we were in earlier, go down here to navigation, you're gonna see right-click navigation by default is enabled. If you hold down control, that'll just tell you it turns it on and off. So essentially you have access to right-click navigation, which is for rotating, you can just right click and drag. So now you can right click and drag in your gray area around your object here, but you can also right click and drag over your object because you're not gonna be ever manipulating your object with right click navigation. You're always right clicking. If you left click, it's still gonna yell at you. But if you're right click navigating, you can right click anywhere on your object here and just, it'll rotate just fine. You can rotate out here, you can rotate out here, you can rotate right here. If you wanna scale, or basically zoom in and out of your object, it's control right click. And again, you can control right click up here, you can control right click over here, and you can control right click here. Now the cool thing about right click navigation is if you wanna zoom in on a particular area, it's pretty simple. You can just control and then click over here and it zooms right in on that spot. And if you wanna move, it's alt and then right click. You can do that on your object as well. You don't have to be out here in your space. You can do that wherever. And you can also hold down alt and right click because it still maintains similar functionality to classic ZBrush. So you're using right click navigation, but if you want to, you can actually, you know, right click to move. And then if you let go of alt, it'll still zoom. It'll still have zoom functionality. So you can use kind of the best of both worlds in that case. Now use whichever navigation method, method is most comfortable for you. However, if you are gonna use the classic ZBrush navigation, and let's say we get in too big to our object and we wanna rotate around our object, we don't have any more gray space. So we click on it it's gonna still yell at you, hey, you need to convert this before you're able to sculpt on it. So in order for us to zoom out, what we have to do is you're gonna see there's a white area here that's your safe, Let's consider that your safe action here. So if you go over here, you can actually still navigate around your object here. So you can hold down Alt and then pull back 
and you can zoom out of your object. Now, if you're zoomed too far in with right-click navigation, no big deal. All you have to do is just hold down right, control right-click to zoom out or alt right-click and then let go of alt, and you can zoom out as well. So you don't need to worry too much about safe action when you're using right-click navigation, but if you're using classic navigation, let's go back here to your safe action and then the pull out. Another option for you is if we're zoomed in to a closer object here, you can hit this frame button over here, or you can just hit the F key. And you can see when you hover over frame, it says F, you can use the F key to just frame your entire object in your canvas and it'll back you right out. And while we're talking about navigating, I suppose now would be a good time as any to mention why I have fewer buttons over here. The reason I do is because when I'm navigating, uh, you might notice over here under transform that there are move, scale, and rotate buttons over here. I don't use these. I mean, you can go over here and you just click and drag. Uh, let me go ahead and dock this trans. I don't want to have my information over here. I'll dock my transform menu over here. So underneath transform, we've got move, zoom, rotate. You can feel free to use these, I suppose, but I wouldn't get too comfortable using these because you don't Speed in ZBrush is navigation part of it. Anyways, you know, being able to navigate around your object. You don't want to be stuck over here trying to go and click on buttons over there. That's silly. More buttons you might see over here as well is if we go over here to the document menu, you probably have a scroll zoom actual and anti-aliased half. We're going to get more into this when we start capturing the document for like tiling textures and capturing renders. But for now, you can actually move your whole document around. You can zoom out from your document, you can hit actual to make sure you're at, you know, one-to-one -one pixels, and then you can anti-alias half. I go ahead and get rid of those. I don't really use them that much, so I just go ahead and get rid of those. And if you want to, skip forward to ZBrush custom hotkeys, custom interface, and we'll go over how to get rid of these buttons. But for now, that's where those buttons reside for the document, and the transform navigation buttons, that's where they reside. I've gone ahead and cleaned them out.